A group of bathers will have to face a shoal of monstrous piranhas that have invaded an aquatic park, but what they don't know is that these creatures are changing at a frightening rate. Today we're going to recap the story of the movie, Piranha 3DD, from 2012. A few years ago, on a beach located in the Lake Victoria region, thousands of people were wiped out by a shoal of monstrous piranhas, which were supposed to have been extinct for more than 2 million years. This event led to the beach becoming an area of isolation, with only the wreckage of the boats and speedboats that were used at the site remaining, along with the bodies of several piranhas. One night, a couple of farmers are looking for their mare Sarah, who has disappeared into the swamp. In order to find it, they decide to go on foot, walking through the shallowest areas of the river. As soon as they find the poor, lifeless animal floating in the river, the men try to pull it out, not even realizing that they are surrounded by hundreds of piranha eggs. When it is moved, Sarah's body releases various gases, leaving the old men confused as to what has happened to the mare. Believing that they can alleviate the stench that those gases are causing, one of the farmers decides to light his lighter, causing a huge explosion and completely destroying the animal's body. Suddenly, the large shoal of piranhas that was trapped in the mare's body falls back into the river and starts devouring one of the farmers, who screams in despair. Trying to save his friend, the old man approaches and tries to strike the fish, but he is quickly surrounded and eliminated by the creatures, which devour him in a few seconds. A few months later, Chet, the owner of the town's new water park, is recording another one of his commercials when Maddie, his stepdaughter, shows up on the scene. Realizing that her stepfather has hired several actresses as park employees, Maddie is outraged and asks why the man has made such a strange decision. Upon hearing this, Chet reveals that he is doing this to honor his stepdaughter's mother, who, before she passed away, asked him to do everything he could to keep the family water park running smoothly, so that they could guarantee a great future for the girl. Disgusted by her stepfather's actions, Maddie orders him to undo all these changes, since she also owns the company. However, the man refuses and says that he owns an even larger percentage than his stepdaughter, making him the sole and real owner of the water park. During the evening, Maddie meets up with her friends from college, and during the conversation, she runs into Officer Kyle, her ex-boyfriend. The young man reveals that he will be working as a park security guard for a few weeks, so they can spend time together again, but Maddie refuses, saying that she will only be in town until the end of the summer. Outside the water park, a young couple is chatting on the pier, and so that they can cool off, they dive into the river. As soon as she starts swimming around the place, Shelby feels something pinching her body, and believing that her companion Josh is trying to scare her, she gets angry and decides to get out of the water. On the other side of the woods, Ashley has fun with her boyfriend Travis, handcuffing him to a metal table, but at that moment, the young man slams on the handbrake, causing the vehicle to start moving towards the bottom of the river. Realizing that the van is sinking faster and faster, Ashley tries to free Travis so that they can escape. The problem is that the girl can't find the key to the handcuffs and begins to despair. Trying to calm her down, the young man orders the woman to turn on the vehicle's lights, so that they can look for the keys more easily, but in doing so, they end up alerting all the piranhas in the river, who start attacking the couple. Unable to find a way to free her beloved, Ashley decides to run away, saying she will scream for help. However, this only makes Travis even more desperate, and thanks to his scandals, he ends up attracting the attention of the school of piranhas, who begin to devour him. Worried about her boyfriend, the girl climbs into the van and orders him to try to get out of the back door before they sink completely. But it's too late, Travis no longer has the strength to escape, and after having his arm removed by the fish, he sinks with the vehicle. Ashley realizes that she won't be able to escape the place, and after a few minutes, the creatures catch up with her, making her the next snack for the piranha school. The next day, while all the staff are preparing for the grand opening of the water park, Maddie realizes that some members of the team are missing. So the girl asks Shelby and Josh about the whereabouts of the couple from the van, since they didn't clock in that morning, but none of the employees have heard from the young people. Suddenly, Shelby tells her that she's not feeling very well, and after a few seconds, she ends up feeling nauseous. Meanwhile, Kyle finds the van lost in the lake, and after bringing it to dry land with the help of a winch, he opens the vehicle's doors. In doing so, he realizes that the young people are no longer inside, and believing that they may have survived the accident, he returns to Shelby and Maddie. Kyle says that Ashley and Travis are probably lost somewhere in the area, and that they'll find them soon. Even so, the young woman is still extremely worried, and so that she can calm down, she leaves, accompanied by Maddie. On the pier, the pair talk about the missing couple, when Shelby suddenly realizes that something has brushed against her feet, and noticing that the place is swarming with piranhas, they try to escape. During the escape, the fish start destroying the pier, 
knocking down several wooden planks and causing Shelby to fall into the water. Maddie quickly runs to her friend and helps her up so that they can run to the sand, but the piranhas don't give up and continue to destroy the platform's support. Just as she was about to escape, Shelby realizes that the wooden floor is splitting, and in order not to fall into the water again, she jumps backwards, being surrounded by the creatures once more. The problem is that this only makes the young woman even more desperate, and so that she can rescue her friend, Maddie orders her to jump off the raft. With that, Shelby jumps towards the girl, but soon after, they are knocked into the river, causing the piranhas to swim furiously towards their prey. Even so, the pair manage to escape the attack, reaching the edge of the beach safely. Just then, one of the piranhas lunges out of the water, trying to devour Maddie, and to protect her companion, Shelby destroys the creature with a large stone. Sometime later, the youngsters are rescued by Kyle and Barry, and together they set off in the direction of Lake Victoria, so that they can find out what caused the shoal to reach the local river. When they arrive at the site, they meet Mr. Goodman, who is extremely worried when he receives the news that the piranhas are back in town. The old man is an expert on these creatures, and since the last attack on Lake Victoria, he has studied these species more and more, as he has one of them in his private aquarium. After hearing about what happened to the girls, Goodman says that the region has no river connection to the piranha's original lake, so they are traveling through underground channels. Soon afterwards, the man decides to demonstrate the piranha's tracking ability, and after dividing the aquarium with a metal plate, he puts a small frog inside. At the same moment, the creature activates its hunting senses and begins to headbutt the metal, trying to reach the amphibian. Moved by what he's seeing, Barry takes the risk to save its prey, and after removing it from the aquarium, he says that he once had a frog as a pet, and that's why he couldn't let it be disposed of in this way. Goodman then takes the youngsters to his desk, where he reveals that these species of piranha usually live in places full of substances such as sulfur dioxide, which comes from all the geothermal activity that takes place in these regions. The problem is that this substance is often used in chlorine water treatments, which can end up confusing fish and causing them to enter urban drainage systems, especially in areas surrounded by swimming pools. Upon hearing this, the group of young people remember that the water from the water park drains into the same lake where they encountered the shoal, which means that these creatures could invade the entire plumbing system at any time. So Maddie tells them that they need to go back, and Kyle says that he will call in the dive team so that they can analyze the area the next day. However, the girl refuses, saying that the park will open at dawn, and that if all those people are exposed to danger, the number of victims will exceed the attack on Lake Victoria. Concerned about the frequent nausea his friend is experiencing, Josh allows her to spend a night at his house, so he can make sure she recovers successfully. While they talk, the couple watch the news, where a report on the disappearance of Ashley and Travis takes place. According to the journalists, none of the bodies were found in the place where the victims were last spotted, but what nobody knows is that Ashley's body remains at the bottom of the lake, serving as a great snack for the piranhas. Shaken by everything that is happening, Shelby asks her boyfriend to keep her company, and while they are having fun together, the girl feels something moving inside her belly, and begins to have a seizure. At the same time, Josh feels that something strange is happening to his body, and after moving away from the woman, he receives a bite on his critical parts, which makes him scream in pain as he runs around the house, completely terrified. At this point, it is revealed that the cause of all the young woman's nausea was the presence of a young piranha, which had invaded her body the night the couple swam in the lake. In order to free himself from the fish's bite, Josh takes one of the kitchen knives and attacks the creature, but ends up hitting one of its sensitive parts, which leaves him injured. After a few seconds, Shelby regains consciousness, and noticing that the place is full of blood, she looks for her lover. When she arrives in the kitchen, the girl is faced with a young piranha, which is still struggling on the floor as it tries to devour the piece it removed from the young man's body. Becoming increasingly worried, Shelby continues to call out for Josh, who suddenly appears and threatens her with a knife, questioning why all this is happening. At the water park's lake, Maddie and Barry prepare to dive in, but before they can continue, the young man reveals that he can't swim, so he won't be able to accompany his friend. Even so, she doesn't give up on her plan, and after grabbing her equipment, Maddie sets off towards the depths of the river, where she finds the sewage outlets completely intact. With that, the girl begins to return to the surface, but at that moment a piranha tries to attack her face, which is protected by her diving goggles. Desperate, Maddie tries to swim away from the shoal, and despite receiving a few bites, she manages to escape, being saved by Kyle, who pulls her out of the lake. On the streets of the city, Chet ends up being stopped by the police, and when he realizes that it is actually Kyle who is operating there, he decides to hand over some money so that the young man will turn a blind eye to his illegal activities. 
At this point, it is revealed that Chet is digging an illegal well beneath the water park, which allows him to have an endless supply of water. The man knows that if he is caught, everything will fall apart, so he bribes Kyle, saying that if he stays out of his way, and uses his authority as sheriff to camouflage his crimes, he will pay him back in large amounts of money. Meanwhile, in the park's dispensary, Maddie is finishing treating her ankle injury when Barry shows up. During the conversation, he asks if her friend is thinking of getting back together with Kyle, as he has noticed that the officer misses her company very much. However, before she can answer the young man, Maddie comes across Shelby, who appears with a frightening appearance, and reveals everything that happened to Josh. They quickly head to the hospital, and as soon as he finds out about the emergency, Sheriff Kyle goes to the scene so that he can investigate the situation. After assuring the couple that they are safe and that their injuries are being treated, the young man notes that the doctors will not allow any visitors, and asks his friends to leave so that they can get some rest. Following the sheriff's advice, Maddie goes to her house and takes a bath in the tub, when suddenly, several piranhas invade the pipes and try to devour her. However, the young woman realizes that it was all just a bad dream, and after realizing that she is safe, she manages to calm down. The next day, the water park finally opens, and to check the quality of the place, Deputy Fallon goes to the site to make sure that the piranha attack of a few years ago doesn't happen again. The problem is that the man has severe trauma from swimming pools, as he lost both his legs the last time he decided to swim and had half his body devoured by piranhas. Realizing that his boss isn't feeling ready to overcome his fears, the assistant recommends that he gets into the children's pool, so he won't have any chance of drowning. However, Fallon still has flashbacks of the day he lost his legs, and thanks to his desperation, he ends up pushing his partner, who falls into the pool. In the center of the park, Chet gives his welcome speech to the audience, and then reveals that the main attraction of the day will be none other than David Hasselhoff, the most famous lifeguard of the moment. While the customers are having fun with David, Maddie goes outside, and when she enters the maintenance area, she finds a water pumping motor, realizing that her stepfather is using water from a makeshift well to supply the park. At the same time, Chet appears and tells him that thanks to his idea, they will have an infinite supply of water, but the young woman rebukes him, saying that this will put the lives of thousands of people at risk, since the region is teeming with piranhas, which are traveling through the underground tunnels in search of food. Even so, the man doesn't care and says he won't interrupt his long-awaited inauguration because of the rumors about the shoal. What they don't know is that piranhas are invading the canals as they speak, and some of them have even managed to infiltrate the pools. Inside the park, a young boy goes to talk to his mother, and reveals that he has been bitten by a piranha, but the woman doesn't believe what her son is saying, and orders him to ask the lifeguard for a bandage and get back to having fun. Worried about the danger these people are experiencing, Maddie walks around the site in search of the creatures, when she hears screams coming from the children's pool, where a woman tells her that she has spotted a piranha swimming among the children. Realizing that she doesn't have much time, the girl runs to Chet and orders him to close the water park immediately, but the man says he won't allow that to happen. Noticing that Maddie might get in the way of his accomplice's plans, Kyle captures her friend, and as much as Barry tries to calm the situation, the policeman stands by his decision and begins to take the girl away from the scene. At that moment, the shoal finally comes out of the pipe, and the piranhas begin a ferocious attack on the humans, who start to flee in terror, creating chaos in the water park. The lifeguard quickly uses her whistle to warn everyone, but the situation is already out of control and several bathers are devoured by the fish. So that they can escape, the assistant begins to lead the deputy away from the attack, but the man orders him to go back and bring his metal legs, because he doesn't want to run away while thousands of innocent people are being eliminated by the creatures. After standing up with the help of his titanium prostheses, Fallon walks to the pool, taking advantage of not being affected by the shoal's bites. It also uses one of its legs as a weapon, knocking out several piranhas with its blasts and giving bathers the chance to escape. In the observation tower, David calmly watches all the chaos, and no matter how many swimmers ask for his help, he denies it, saying that he's not a real lifeguard. However, when he looks back, the man realizes that a young boy is trapped in the current of one of the pools, and decides to run to save him. After stopping for a few seconds so that he could breathe, and pushing one of the people back into the piranha water, David took the young man in his arms, feeling proud that he had saved someone's life. Shaken by what he's seeing, Chet is paralyzed, at which point Maddie appears in a rage and punches her stepfather in the face. Noticing that the situation is getting more and more insane, the girl decides to go to the water engines so that they can drain the pools. Halfway there, she runs into Barry and asks him to force the pools to drain, while she stays in the danger zone and tries to reduce the number of victims in the shoal. So Barry starts running to the site, 
but he runs into Dave, another park employee, who has a piranha trapped in an extremely painful place. The young man quickly tries to help his co-worker, and after removing the fish from the man's body, they set off together towards the engines. Since he can't do anything more for his customers, Ched decides to leave, and after collecting his box of savings, he tries to escape from the water park. While looking for a way out of the place, the man comes across a little girl crying next to the body of her mother, who has been eliminated by the piranhas. Feeling guilty about everything that's happening, Chet hands the little girl some money and, after getting into his car, drives off at full speed, without even realizing that the young woman has been run over by the vehicle. During his escape, the park boss ends up through the decoration wires, which end up removing his head. Due to the sudden elimination, the vehicle loses control and crashes into one of the tables, causing Chet's head to fly off and land in one of the pools, becoming an appetizing feast for the hooded piranhas. Amidst the chaos of the water park, Maddie tries to save as many victims as possible, but thanks to the suction activated by Barry and Dave, she begins to be pulled towards the drains. At that moment, Kyle appears, and while holding his friend's hands, he apologizes for everything that is happening, admitting that he was part of Chet's corrupt plan. Shaken by the consequences of his actions, the young man is bewildered, and ashamed of everything he has caused, he runs off, abandoning Maddie so that she can be finished off by the creatures. When he realizes that the policeman is running away, Barry goes to the pool and decides to dive in to rescue the girl, but as he can't swim, he starts to drown and returns to the surface. Even so, the young man doesn't give up, and after picking up his trash-picking trident, he throws it towards one of the piranhas, running it through. The problem is that the young woman keeps drowning, and in order to rescue her, Barry grabs onto a concrete brick, using the weight of the object to sink into the pool and reach Maddie. Due to the movement of the huge amounts of water, the suction motors stop working, allowing the young man to return to the surface while holding the girl in his arms. Barry quickly tries to get his friend to catch her breath, and after a few seconds, Maddie finally wakes up, extremely happy to have been saved by her lover. While the young people kiss, David walks through the park, looking at all the bodies left behind by the school of piranhas. As a result of his panic attack, Kyle becomes increasingly crazed and returns to the pools to try and find any survivors who need help, but it's too late, as everyone left in the water has already been wiped out by the creatures. Disgusted by all the suffering that the piranhas have brought to the innocent people who have been eliminated, Dave pours several gallons of fuel into the water engines and causes a huge explosion in the pipes. Soon afterwards, the bodies of all the piranhas are thrown into the sky, creating a shower of fish all over the water park. At that moment, Kyle notices something strange falling towards him, and before he can dodge it, his head is pierced by the trident, which eliminates him instantly. After the fight is over, Maddie receives a call from Mr. Goodman, who reveals that the piranhas are evolving to increasingly bizarre levels, even being able to walk on land. Upon hearing this, the girl observes one of the fish, which is walking slowly out of the water, as if it were a land animal. Impressed by what he is witnessing, the surviving young boy approaches the mutant piranha and starts filming it as he doesn't believe it could be a threat on dry land. However, the creature was just waiting for the young man to get close enough, and soon after, it leapt towards him, swallowing his head in a single bite. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.